Hi guys, Samantha from GCMS Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a rose cane. So, if you've mix, mix up the colour recipe that I gave in the beginning of the video to create this colour, then you're going to need the original periwinkle colour and pearl white. And so those are the colours that we're going to use today. Then you'll need the three parts Skinner Blend Triangle from my Skinner Blend Triangle set and this is what I'm going to use to cut out my triangles so that this will fit across a 16 inch pasta machine perfectly and eliminates all the issues when it comes to cutting out when it comes to making Skinner Blends cut out one triangle of each There we are, easy. Okay, now just clean up any residue from each of the triangles that you cut out and pop them together like you would a normal skin of blend. And this is for a project that I'm going to create so. The colours that I've chosen here are to match the PBO paints that we're going to use with it later. Okay, then once you've done this, take your triangle and just cut it. There. So they can form a nice You want to try and cut halfway through, but if you didn't manage to do that, you can always just swing that back around so that you get an equal rectangle. Okay, then I'm going to fold it in half now because, as you guys know, if you've done a few Skinner blends before, you know that it's a little bit of a pain and it comes apart, so it's just better to fold it in half now rather than later because then you don't have to worry about it falling apart in the pasta machine. So just stick everything together all nice and stuck together and then we'll roll it through a few times until we get our Skinner Blend. Okay so here's the Skinner Blend. Now I did double up so I did another Skinner Blend and popped it on top of this using the triangle so that I could end up with more clay because I did the Skinner Blend and I decided there wasn't really enough clay. So, now what I want to do is you want to fold this in half again. And you want to run this through a pasta machine and lengthen it. And I'm going to do this on my thickest set. Okay, you can see that it's been lengthened. I'm now going to go down to my middle setting, which is a four. And that is about two millimeters thick. Let me just get rid of any cracks that are running along here. Because those can be, that can get worse when you run it down on a thinner setting. So just fix that now. Okay, then I'm going to run it through again. see a nice long blend. Okay, so now we're ready to start. So we're going to roll this from the light side to the dark. And I've just got a little bit of mess on the side there. So I'll just cut that off. Okay, and now we're going to roll it from the pearl white, which is the lightest, all the way up to our custom colour that we made in the beginning. 
And now when you're making a rose cane for this project, just pick out your PBO paints beforehand. I've picked out mine beforehand and I'll tell you the colours in just a minute so that my rose can match with it. So you don't have to use the same PBO paints that I'm using, but just make sure that your rose uh, matches with it. So if you don't have the same PBO paints as me, it would be better for you to make a different colour rose. So, let's have a look. These are the PBO paints I have. So I have Ash Blue, Extra White, and then I'm going to be using a Moon Paint, and Moon PBO paint, and this is Metal Blue, which is a really nice colour. So those are all going to match my rose. So pick out your paints and design your rows to match. Okay, so now that we've got our Skinner Blend Bullseye, I'll just roll it to get it all squished together. Okay, and then on these ends, we've got, we want to reduce this down quite a bit, so I'm just going to squish these ends because they've got some cracks on them and I want to chop them off and so I'm just squishing the ends so that I form almost like a sweet wrapper sort of shape and then I'm going to chop that off there we are okay then start reducing and these pinched ends are nice because it means that you can start reducing and then it reduce, it lessens the weight on these ends. It means that the cane doesn't start curling in on itself when it comes to the ends. So once you've got your entire cane reduced to that diameter, um, pinch the ends again, get the diameter down, and then reduce again and carry on until you've got enough cane to cut out. 11 parts. Okay, and I'll squish these ends again. And reduce some more. Okay, so I've lengthened it out. Now I'm just going to chop off those ends. Now we're going to cut out 11 parts. So I'm just going to cut out one part here. And I'm going to cut this in half. Okay. And then I'll cut in half again. in half again and I'm making extra parts here just in case because it's always nice to have some extra pieces so we're going to need 11 but I've actually got 16 here well 17 And this will just make sure that we have enough to work with because cut, you'll cut out 11 sometimes and then you'll mess one up and then you have to make that one work because otherwise um, you don't have a cane. So it's just better to work with extra parts. So let's start with one. And what we're going to do is we're going to flatten it out. Okay, like that. And then taper one end so that it's like a really, really long teardrop. Just like that. Okay. 
and then you want to try it this bit can be a little delicate because you don't want it to crack but I want to roll this end in so that it becomes a jelly roll of sorts so I'm just busy gently using the tile to curl this in so that it's not cracking I'm just going to chop off this end, see what it looks like, see that I'm happy with it. Hmm. I think I might actually want a border around these because it's blending into itself a little bit too much. So. Okay, so here's our darker colour, and this is six periwinkle and two purple. So I'm just going to wrap this up. And ideally this should be done before your bullseye cane is reduced. We'll save a lot of work. Okay. Pop that aside and we'll see if that works. Yeah. Okay. Bring that down like we did before. Tape on one end. Okay. Trim up each end. Then gently get this to roll in. Roll. So that we smooth out. And then I'll trim each end. Yeah, that's much better. You just want a subtle contrast. You don't want something that's obvious. Like if you were to put black there, that wouldn't look good. Okay, so that's what we want to do. So I'll do that with the other ones as well. Okay, so I've wrapped them all up. So now we're going to squish five like we did the previous one and we're going to taper the ends. So that we form what looks like stretched teardrops. And we need to make five of those. Keep all these little ends as well. Okay, so I've got five of those. Now what we want to do is so want to position this one, take one of these, and wrap it around. And now don't go the whole way because we need something to fit underneath there. We need to be able to fit another one of these underneath. And then just go the whole way around. And wrap them, wrap it up like that. 
and then just gently press it together. Don't squish it, squish it, but just wrap it together like that. Okay, now you want to bring these ones and they need to fit in over here. So, take that and we're going to make it almost into a semicircle. I guess it's quite a bit flatter than the semicircle, but kind of like that. And taper those ends. And then you'll do five like that. So it fits into these five gaps. And just trim off the ends when you're done. Now what we want to do is we want to plant that semicircle upside down into each of these holes. And this is a really easy can. You don't even have to do this but you could leave this part. This is kind of a stylized rose, it's not really supposed to look like a completely realistic rose because I haven't really seen purple roses before and I'm using pearl white instead of white because I want it to match with the PBO paint so I'm taking a bit of an artistic license on this. So you could try and make it more realistic of course um, by using more realistic colours and replacing the pearl white with white because white would definitely be the more realistic choice and this is the more fun way of creating a rose cone there are other ways of creating it where you focus more on the shading and getting the frilling on the petals but I wanted to do it like this because I want it to look fun and it's easy and you don't have to worry about anything other than just overlapping these petals just a little bit like that there you go okay and so that's going to have formed a round rose and you don't have to pack that with translucent or anything so that's nice now a nice little detail so if you go with a little pin, and I'm just using a piercing pin, and you just mark these outside petals a little bit. To get the look of a frill. Itch. And as I said before, you would don't even really need to do these outside bits you could just leave this twirly bit in the middle I've done that before and it makes a really pretty flower and it looks like a stylized rose so it's a really fun easy project that any beginner can do you don't have to worry about the shading you can use any colors you want so have fun with it don't stress about it this is a nice and easy can you don't even have to do any um, translucent packing which can be a little difficult so this is nice and easy for you. It's fun. I like doing this one. Okay, I'm just reducing it down. These ends I'm going to have to chop off a little. And then the next part, we're going to create a necklace using this and PBO paint. And we're going to be using some links. And so the links I'm going to be using are these ones from Emma's from eBay and so they're a little bezel with two loops on them so that will create a nice interlinked necklace where we can have a bezel with the PBO paint in it and then another bezel with the roses in it and then we'll put resin on both and it'll look quite nice okay so I'm just reducing it down to the size that I'm going to use in the bezels and I want it fairly small I don't want a large 
rows. I want a small one so that I can fit multiple ones into that bezel. And it's best to all do this while the cane is nice and soft. Because then it reduces nice and easy. I think that should be enough. I might need to reduce it a little bit more. There we are. It's a cute little rose. I think that's enough for me to reduce it. I don't want to reduce it anymore. There we are. And so you can see that nice little flower in the middle. And then each time you cut a slice, what you can do is cut out a slice, round it out, press it, and then you can take a piercing pin. And just frill these outside bits to give it more of the look of a rose. But anyway, that looks quite nice. So that's basically it for this tutorial and so I do hope that it was helpful to you and I really did enjoy making this tutorial. It's a lot of fun, it's easy and it produces a really pretty result. So in the next part we're going to use PBO paints and we're going to link a necklace together and it's going to look really fun. So look out for that part, that part will be coming soon and if you like this tutorial please do let me know, leave a like and a comment, I love hearing what you guys want to think and if you would like to see how to make a more realistic rose let me know and I'll put that in my list of tutorials to do but for now this is going to be the rose that I make. And if you have any photos of what you make using this tutorial, please do let me know and post them on Facebook or Instagram or you can send them through the website jessimatutorials.com um, and I'll be able to see what you guys made. And if you would like to support me, I do have a Patreon account and I post tutorials on there every single month and that would be super helpful to me. So if you could do that, that would be really helpful. And if you would like to buy the Skinner Blend Triangle that I showed in this tutorial, I do have it on my Etsy shop, Jessima Design, and I'll provide a link for that in the description below. And as always, I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.